once you've watched the picture, which I think you should watch like three times at least, once because you got to enjoy it too. You know, you can't really get past the, the visual until you've seen it at least once. I think if you start writing right after you see the first thing, you're doing yourself a bit of a disservice. At least try and watch it three times so that you start noticing camera moves and who's talking and what the dialogue ranges are, and you really kind of get a sense of the mechanics of it. And if you have to watch it four or five times, great. Um, so that was really important. That's less and less now. I think the other thing is like having a really great template set up for yourself that works all the time. You don't want to keep rebuilding that template over and over again in any way, shape, or form if you can avoid it. You know, turning off, you know, names and deleting a few staves here and there because that's not part of your orchestra is fine, but you should have a nice large orchestra template to start with that you don't have to rebuild. Are we talking score, sequencer, paper, all the Score template, like okay. Finale or Sibelius. Yeah, that template. I mean, the, the way we do it, and, and so every camp's different. Um, Hans World, we do our own MIDI file transcription. A lot of other people, they have it done by a copyist. Either way, you have to deal with that first. And that's a whole nother giant topic um, for speed. And again, I learned that at Joanne's office under duress. <laughs> and with James Newton Howard, who doesn't do anything but in 120 and no meterings. You have to meter it and figure out the tempo. Yeah, he plays, and he's such a brilliant piano player, he can just play it in. And then when you get it, you've got nothing to work with in terms of where it is and where things land. You have to figure it out. So once you get into the process of the actual orchestration, if you have a great template that you really know and can get around in, I think the next really important thing is your working process, which for me starts with the strings. I always orchestrate the strings first because they're going to tell you a lot of what's going on melodically. They're going to tell you a lot of what's going on spatially, how thick or thin they are, because again, most people use strings as their sample base these days. And you've already probably done the MIDI file transcription, hopefully, and that tells you where a lot of the buried bodies are buried too. Really, when I, by the time I'm done with the MIDI file transcription, I already know what I'm orchestrating. But I do the strings first, then I go to the brass, because they're going to tell me weight, they're going to give me proportional depth and height to this thing I already did. Then I go to percussion, piano, harp, because that's going to tell me flavors, colors, you know, what, what, I don't want to block them out. I don't want to do too much to not hear them. And then I do woodwinds last. So that process has really worked for me over the years, and that's what they taught us at Grove. All right. We'll circle back.